Every leader follows a different path according to the American Biographical Institute. I've been nominated by the American Biographical Center in Cambridge, England, as one of the 2,000 outstanding intellectuals of the 21st century. The Oxford English Dictionary defines intellectualism as the doctrine that knowledge is wholly or mainly derived from pure reason, and it follows by saying that an intellectual is a person possessing a good outstanding understanding, enlightened person. Surely, therefore, this definition is the reason for your selection to be included in this prestigious publication, which is due for release in late 2004. My name will be on the wall of tolerance. I received a certificate from Rosa Parks, the Campaign for Tolerance, authorizes that my name be placed on the wall honoring those who are leading the way towards a more tolerant and just America as founding members of the National Campaign for Tolerance. Villamore means little mother in Swedish. I wanted to be a dancer or doctor. I learned all about music from dance classes. William Tell Overture, School Days, La Campasita, Oh You Beautiful Doll. I took dance lessons from Lavinia Hogan. Her recitals at John Hancock Hall in Boston were spectacular synchronizations of dance with props, light shows, hoop skirts, pantaloons, glow in the dark costumes, and makeup men. I later took lessons from the genius choreographer Viola Briding, who described my tap as scintillating. Scintillating is a, a spark, a flash of light, sparkles, twinkles, a phosphor, glow in the dark, brilliance of mind. It's a good description also for, for my writing style. I spent Saturdays at Highland Hall in West Roxbury with Viola Briding when she was teaching. I was her pet. She used to take me to lunch across the street at the Center Cafe. She had been a Rockette. Her body was an amazingly developed, finely tuned precision dancing machine. The steps she choreographed were intricate, sophisticated, imaginative, and unique. I was chosen with some other students of her dance school to become a member of the Allen Level Troop. We danced at Hanscom Field, at Veterans Hospitals, and at the Foxborough Lions Festival of Talent. I spent lots of time in my bathing suit at beaches at the Cape, New Hampshire, and at Nantasket and Fieldston by the Rexicana Ballwoman on bikes with my cousin Tom. I was a perfect baby, 7 pounds, 21 inches. I look a little like Shirley Temple there. I grew up in Roslindale on the street behind the Rialto Theater. We used to sneak in through the back door to the show. Roslindale Square was at one end of the street and cliffs down to Fallon Field at the other. I played a lot of ball with my cousins Tom and Tim. The New Haven Railroad ran behind my house. There were a lot of cherry trees, peach trees, grapevines, and tomato plants, even horses and chickens on this very Italian street. I had my own sandbox custom built for me. We spent a lot of time down in Tasket at band concerts and on the beach. My mother was a secretary to Dr. John Joseph Sacco, a prominent brain surgeon in Boston. I used to pop in a lot to the office to visit her when I was in elementary school. She was always a fashion plate and I admired her greatly as a mom. 
She almost bought a cottage at Fieldston Beach, but didn't. I had my own boat named after me, the Linda. I was into monkey business at an early age, with a monkey at the Brockton Thea. I was a boxing musketeer in my youth and voted in as recording secretary of Boxing Out Violence in December of 1995. Lewis had wanted to be a boxer when he was young. He had one fight at Boston Arena and quit because he thought he might hurt somebody. There he is at the Brockton Thea. When he was a teenager, he worked at Revere Beach on the Strongman Bell and at the games. I went to Brownies and Girl Scouts Sacred Heart Parish with my friends, Jean, Christine, and Mary Ann. There I'm holding hands and chatting with Santa Claus, probably at Jordan Marsh in the 50s. In confirmation, we received the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord, usually one in a particular way. The endowment of a powerful operative grace makes us more docile and obedient to the prompting of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Those gifts manifest themselves and determine to a large degree our vocation in life and how effectively we contribute to building that part of the kingdom of God which has been entrusted to us and ultimately our happiness in this life and the next. Confirmation was at St. Teresa's in West Roxbury. My noted goals are happiness and money. I'm described as singular of an independent nature, a daydreamer, intelligent, does just what she wants to do, unpretentious. I guess all of that's true daydreamer. I hope that's tied into my creativity. I be believe it is. That's an aerial shot of Canton High School, 1966. Marie Fish was the coach of the Dramatics Club. She got her sets from New York when we did Little Abner my junior year. She was also my French teacher. And she advised me that since I was an A student in French, and had been in, at Latin school in grade seven and eight, that I might want to work as a translator at the UN. The senior chorus sang, Climb Every Mountain and You'll Never Walk Alone during the graduation. Mr. Tai taught the classics in literature. Martin Vidoin was my math teacher. I was in accelerated math courses all through high school. He was very impressive very energetic, used to jump up and down in front of the class, telling us that when we were freshmen, our heads were like sponges, we absorbed everything, and by the time we were ready for graduation, our head was like balsa wood and we absorbed nothing. One of his favorite expressions was, I see, said the blind man to the deaf man, as the man with no legs got up and walked away. He was a graduate of Brown University and also a coach of the basketball team. I lived in Canton in the Beverly Hills and Walnut Knoll section. Susan was a friend in the neighborhood. We met at the World's Fair in New York in 1966 after graduation. She had moved back home to Baltimore. That's my friend Jane Bullman. She's described as having a goal of marriage, a good sport, can't help but like her, always has a joke, and delightfully indiscreet, all of which is true. We were great friends, and her father helped to advise us on our futures to get into IBM and data processing, the coming thing. We got our certificates in key punching at Bryant and Stratton in Copley Square before graduation. I worked at relief printing on Summer Street in downtown Boston in 1967 and 68. The company was owned by Robert Rimmer, author of That Girl from Boston and the Harrod Experiment about free love and wife swapping. It was a top seller. I met my husband when he had come back from serving in the military, in the army for three years in Germany. We did a German toast 
Prosit. Marriage lasted for 10 years. We had two children, two gifts from God, Danielle and Stacy. We were the beat generation, members of the generation that came of age after World War II, who supposedly, as a result of disillusionment stemming from the Cold War, espouse mystical detachment and relaxation of sexual standards. Thursdays was IBM night for Jane and I when we were taking our key punch course. We'd go into the hippie pad in Jamaica Plain that her husband, Jerry Anderson, lived at. That's my ex, Tom, and her husband, Jerry. Jane died of leukemia at age 25. She left two small children. My mother worked for many printing and mailing and publishing houses. I interviewed the publisher at Horizon House where she was responsible in totality for the typesetting for microwave journal and telecommunications magazines. They did shows with her work. My mother had wanted to be a constant pianist and went to the Boston Conservatory of Music. My brother had his chance for the Hollywood spotlight. I wanted him to live when he was brain dead on a life support system, so I prayed. The answer I received was to study psychology. Lewis and Charlene were on their prayer paths at that time. Going beyond the imagination today, we'll be touching on spirituality, revelation, and creation, as this is the essence of nature stone art. I'm your host, Linda Myers, and we're here today at Ross Free Community College with artist Lewis Brown creator of this new art form and his mural Birds of Paradise One. This is a very exciting new art form. It's three-dimensional and it's like being in a new dimension. This art may well be the eighth wonder of the world. It has an energy and a life of its own that flows freely through it and that is healing. This art is truly revolutionary in that it will bridge fine art and manufacturing and in its ability to create jobs. It draws us all to one mind. It's a phenomenon in that it has a tendency to bring two people together to work as one mind. The thoughts of one mind are in the thoughts of the other mind at a particular time united in a single purpose in the creation of Nature Stone Art. Nature Stone Art was created by two minds, the minds of brother and sister Louis Brown and Charlene Brown. They were looking for something new, something that was art, and something that was unique. They were gifted and talented and wanted to find a special way to create art. They wanted something of their own, something that was not in this world, and something that the world could not give them. So they prayed and their prayers were answered with nature stone art, a three-dimensional combination of painting, sculpting, and mosaic stonework. Did this part of our filming at BNN TV God actually took you right back to this to the beginning of the Stone Age and your thoughts went to the pyramids and also you began thinking a lot about scripture um, thinking about God saying upon this rock I built my church and you wondered what God meant by that and you wondered how you could build on that rock and the way that you and Charlene came up with to build on that rock was nature's, nature's stone art. I'm Linda Myers Brown. I met Lewis in 1994 in March on St. Patrick's Day at Boston City Hall at his 30-day exhibit there of his three-dimensional nature stone art, new life art form, medium, and technique invention. I had heard about the um, festivities that were being held for St. Patrick's Day at Boston City Hall on the radio, and that's what I had headed in there for. I had no idea that Lewis was going to be there with his um, Alpha and Omega art exhibit. Um, that's what some of his friends told me they thought of his exhibit when they had gone down to Boston City Hall. When I had uh, this, um, this, uh, this uh, city hall, that's how I met Linda. 
I was very um, amazed. Anyway, I walked through the doors from the festivities and um, was um, shock and awe, actually. I was very um, amazed by the power and energy, vibrancy, and life of the art exhibit that I saw in front of me. I had never seen anything like it. Um, I turned the corner and the first artwork that I came to was the red coach and I was compelled to feel and touch the ducks that absolutely compelled me. Um, a little ways in the distance I saw um, a figure and he started walking towards me and Lewis introduced himself as the creator of this, this artwork and he was there because Bruce Rossley who was the art commissioner at that time had asked him to come in because he had so many comments and questions from people that were attending the exhibit that he couldn't handle it so he needed Lewis to be in there to talk to everybody and explain the artwork and Lewis was all connected with City Hall because his mother Caritha Brown um, had worked in the art department and with the judges at City Hall for, for many years in fact she has um, a plaque in the um, council chambers commemorating her her name is on it so Lewis and I began talking and and discussing the various artworks and we came to the large mural which you see behind me which was at the end of the hall and I stood opposite it and I became absolutely transfixed in a, in a hypnotic way upon the mural and I could see li little different colors of energy waves coming out from it and this is exactly the way it was described by Arthur Dion of the Naga Gallery in a letter that he wrote for Lewis when he was requesting grant money from the National Endowments for the Arts in Washington. He talked about how it would become hypnotically fixed upon it, and, and you do. And I spotted out the Madonna. I was standing right opposite her, and I knew this artwork was going to have tremendous value. So Lewis and I t talked for a long time and he told me about his 26 page marketing report and we had a real meeting of the mind about his art and I thought that I probably could help him since I had a, a lot of skills and, and background and knowledge in a lot of different fields. I had worked at Harvard at the publishing office in accounting. I had been a secretary to three managers at um, RGIS inventory specialist and of course when you're the secretary to three managers you have to be fixing their mistakes so that um, you have the equivalent knowledge of a manager. I also had done real estate um, and studied real estate law at Lee Institute in order to become certified in that. I got 93% in finance on the real estate exam and I was able to um, write a 23 page marketing um, and business plan to establish this artwork as a, as a franchise when we were looking for a location on Kingston Street in downtown Boston to be set up as, um, as the working model. So Lewis um, took me home to meet his sister Charlene that day that I met him downtown at Boston City Hall. She's the co-inventor of this art form and we talked for a long time and then I went home and um, didn't know that I was going to be working with Lewis and Charlene and then I was compelled to contact Lewis and I've been um, 
absolutely, completely fulfilled with my talents and gifts for the first time in my life um, in working with Lewis with his uh, invention. And we decided to get married in May of this year, 2003, uh, because he's the soulmate that I was seeking a um, phenomenal musical and art creator. So Lewis is going to be creating his next artwork, a three-dimensional sculpture of myself. That's why you can see a, a piece of plywood behind me. And he's going to be coming in and telling you about that himself. Yeah, my name is Lewis Brown, and um, when I had uh, this, um, this art at this uh, city hall, that's how I met Linda. And um, since this art was like an invention, that's why we had a 26-page market report. <coughs> and, um, I'm, go I'm going to do another uh, mirror size uh, of Linda and um, it's going to be done on, on plywood because uh, when people see this art they can see the energy comes out of this art like a heat wave, like real power for heat wave. That's how powerful this art is, because this is not the average regular art that, that people do on campus. And uh, on this uh, piece of plywood right here, this one behind me on, on the side right here, that's where we're going to do a uh, portrait of Linda, three-dimensional portrait. And most people never heard of a three-dimensional portrait called Nature Stone. Gotcha, art. I wore the Cinderella shoes when Lewis and I got married. I'm in International Who's Who 2001 to 2002. And National Register's Who's Who 2002 to 2003 and 2003 to 2004. And the Marcus Who's Who 2002 to 2003. I'm noted in my business, Lillimore Enterprises, as creative and business writer and for film production and as publicist and agent to Lewis Brown and for my work with him at the Nature Stone Art Gallery and in education at Harvard University and Framingham State College in psychology, media, and the arts are noted. My children, Stacy and Danielle, are named. Lewis and I did lots of experimental video and work with the blind. This portrait of Lewis was done by George Trickle, a photographer who also did a professional shoot of Lewis's exhibit at Boston City Hall in 1994. He did this portrait in a shoot at his studio in downtown Boston to a Rolling Stones cassette. He captured him in two rolls of film. He wanted to do this portrait to follow Lewis's progress as an artist and to recognize him for his exhibit at Springfield Museum of Fine Art. George Walter Vincent Smith Museum on the Quadrangle. That's a dinosaur ice sculpture at the Boston Common. Scripture says, seek and you shall find, and in my house there are many mansions. This is truth. These are mansions of ice sculptures that Lewis and I found on first night at Copley Square, inspired by Aladdin and the Dolphin. 
Lewis was in the headline bar of the Taunton Daily Gazette in an article called An Unusual Spirit's Unusual Art, which was published in the lifestyle section of the paper when we opened the gallery in July of 1998. Lewis and I were in the headline bar of the Brockton Enterprise newspaper when George and Sarah Ann Blindson's birth painted fans here at the gallery and worked with the art in a tactile manner. This one was the exhibit at the City Hall. Boston City Hall? In the, in the Museum of Fine Arts in West Springfield. In West Springfield. Well, how long ago was it at, at Boston City Hall? For one, it was, um, it was done last year. Yes, I mean, 19, 1994. Right, right. And it was a one-month exhibition? Yes. And it was a one-man exhibition? Yeah. Yeah. Correct? Great, great. And I understand that from that particular um, exhibit, you received a lot of interesting phone calls and yeah. mail and people who were, like, really interested in this kind of concept of art because it is unique. Yeah. It's definitely unique. Very, very few artists, I'm sure, have tried this technique. And you've gotten a lot of, um, a lot of following as a result of that showing. Yes. Because mm -hmm. uh, when they had this down the city hall for that one month, that's how I meet uh, my agent, Linda Myers. Mm -hmm. That's when she came in, into the city hall and she saw it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was like a mind blow. Yes, yes. Well, it is to me also. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Well, that's very good. We are going to speak to Linda shortly, and um, very shortly we're going to go over into the studio, and we're going to talk more about where you have come from in terms of your art and the, your vision of where you're going and what you would like to see happen within the community and the community at large in terms of your art and um, children who would like to learn this technique themselves. So thank you very much. Plus that we can get it international too. Yes, well, that, that yeah. goes without saying. Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank okay. you very much. Space that we really need to, to um, make a lot of things out of this art because mm -hmm. that's like this art going to be growing and growing a lot of people like to do it a lot of students like to do it mm -hmm. i mean i know when uh, we had the space at roxbury community college mm -hmm. and the minute we brought it in there the, the students look like mm -hmm. they want to take it up and do it right right <laughs> yeah right. it seems yes it is hard and it is difficult but because an artist Part of an artist's life is struggle. You know, struggle to create the right kind of art, struggle to be able to be exposed to the media as well as to the public. Um, certainly those exhibits that they have done will certainly boost their, their push forward to be more exposed. Uh, certainly a lot of um, a difficult process to get at exhibited um, there is an acceptance process that has to be juried in and it has to be accepted by the various visual arts experts that are involved. They have to do a complete evaluation and it, it's not easy. There's a lot of competition and uh, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very good. I saw Prince Charles at the 350th when I worked at Harvard. But and that was from 1986 to 1989. I worked at the office of the university publisher right in front of Harvard Stadium. They were a complete publishing business. We had a plant out back with the presses and the bindery. And I worked in the accounting department and covered all aspects of accounts, receivable and payable, and did a lot of computer work, including invoicing and tracking time in job cost centers with with the um, guys out in the plant, the camera people, the paste-up people, the strippers, the bindery people, and all that. I also helped to bring in the Harvard Union of Clerical and Technical Workers. Harvard's a great place to work, but there were just a few things wrong, which led me to um, help the union to get in. <laughs> We had a company picnic at Harvard Stadium 
in the yard behind the office of the university publisher when I worked there. We had a high energy volleyball game and I injured my hand and had to ice it up and was assisted by one of the cameramen. I went to Framingham State College. So I donated several of my films to the school through Dr. Heinemann. That's May Hall where I took courses in art and literature. I took courses such as the comic view, essentials of writing, intro to drawing, two-dimensional design, philosophy of literary criticism, and film history and criticism. That was with Dr. Arthur Noletti, where we learned a lot about opening montages by viewing a film a week. I studied intro to drawing and two-dimensional design with Steve Durkee, who founded the Museum of Modern Architecture in Wellfleet. These are 24 views of a good from a final project that I did. This was valuable background for working with Lewis's artwork. Those are some sketches I did of Danielle when I was taking the intro to drawing course. My great-grandfather on my mother's side was a stone cutter. He worked in Italy and in this country on churches doing mosaic stone work. I did an artwork of me at the Boston Common. I got my certificate in portable television production at BNN TV. Tenacious Stone Art was uh, kind of uh, a little hard to put together at the first time until something came into the picture like, like a puzzle. And then, I mean, all of a sudden, you know, that we had almost the same thought through the, through the two paths. But this was in between the time when the two paths came together into one. <laughs> and, uh, and that's how that's how this thing, this image of Nature Stone Art came out from this creation. It's like two visions into one mind uh, working together to bring out this uh, unusual uh, image of nature from Nature Stone Art. Uh. Lewis and I came to Roxbury Community College to do our BNN certification programs in television production. As writer and TV producer on the shoot, I decided to focus on the themes that I had identified in Lewis's masterworks of art through information that he gave me and through my visual interpretation of his artwork. I identified the themes of spirituality, revelation, and creation. And recently we've expanded that to include education. We decided in our first video to also tell the story of the one mind phenomenon and as Lewis's invention as the three-dimensional new life art form medium and technique that bridges fine art and manufacturing. We decided to do a lot of um, intense scrutinizing of Lewis's invention with the camera. We did close-up shots putting the lens actually on the artwork to reveal the textual elements and the sculpturing components. And then we did panning and zooming and other close-up sh close shots. This was experimental video and it was important that we try to capture all of this. We received our certifications and then went back to do a second
video with the education department involving students. I think that I probably should, you know, but if, uh, um, refocus means to, to go all the way into full telephoto and then make sure the focus is good. So, yeah, all the way in. There you go. And there you go. Okay. We're going to be taking a step beyond the imagination today. We're going to be touching on spirituality, revelation, and creation, which are the essence of nature stone art. I'm your host, Linda Myers, and we're here today at Roxbury Community College with creator of nature stone art, artist Lewis Brown, and his mural, Birds of Paradise One. Okay. Um, it's okay. I can, I can be cutting here if I get stuck. Sure. Like, okay, because I think I'm going to have to go to the book. Our first experimental videos were broadcast on the Early Works program of BNN TV. We put the shots and words to music, and it came out like this. Be taking a step beyond the imagination today. We're going to be touching on spirituality, revelation, and creation, which are the essence of nature stone art. I'm your host, Linda Myers, and we're here today at Roxbury Community College with creator of nature stone art, artist Lewis Brown, and his mural, Birds of Paradise One. Nature stone art is a very exciting new art form. It's a three-dimensional, and it's like being in a new dimension. This art may well be the eighth wonder of the world. It has an energy and a life of its own that flows freely and warmly through it, and that is healing. This art is truly revolutionary in that it will bridge fine art and manufacturing and in its ability to create jobs. It draws us all to one mind. It's a phenomenon in that it has, it has a tendency to draw two people together to work as one mind. The thoughts of one mind are in the thoughts of the other mind, at a particular time, united in a singular purpose in the creation of nature stone art. Nature stone art was created by two minds, the minds of sister and brother, Lewis Brown and Charlene Brown. They were looking for something that was new, they were looking for something that was unique, and they were looking for something that was art. They were both gifted and talented and wanted to find a way of, that was special to create art. They wanted something of, of their own and something that was not in this world and something that the world could not give them. So they prayed and their prayers were answered with nature stone art. It's a three-dimensional combination of painting, sculpting, and mosaic stonework. We received our certification and then went back to do a second video <laughs> involving students. I wrote a synopsis for the students to get participation and invited them to meet us at Lewis's Mural in the Student Lounge on February 4th, 1997. Get in 
get, get yourself into the pitch and it's like, oh, can I just run over there? You know, uh, I gotta get out here. Yeah. I'm from the islands. Right, right. So, 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 back home, so you, you know? should know about how nature. Oh, oh definitely. It reminds yeah. me back home so much. It's like, wow. It's, <laughs> I think it's the colors that make it a very yeah. um, a large factor of why it's so alive. Because, I mean, it just blends in so well and it makes it look even more mm -hmm. realistic. It, you know, you can go to any mountain, you can see this, you know, you'll actually see something like that. So that's why I even have a real connection with, with what I'm seeing here, plus, you know, it really makes a lot of sense. See, because of us, very vivid. You mean my age now? I figure out that a blind man can, you may not, no, not see the colors or see it, but, but he can feel it. Right, right, right. Really tell right, what right. right. He can see there. You might can feel the energy in it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> But something like this never been proved by people like that yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, but you know, I was so, saying it's time for somebody to break the ice, right. you know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. just to see how they express how, how exactly. I'm feeling. And yeah, with with the stone artistry, that that makes even a blind person possible to, you know, really tell just by feeling the corners and the right. shapes that it is a very lively and very beautiful picture. So it makes a lot of sense. I mean, because a lot of people would never believe that this is done this with plain watercolors, like, you know. Yeah. This is a watercolor paint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. watercolors, I've never seen one. Visual impact impression. <laughs> we need a bigger piece of tape. We worked with the Department of Education at RCC on the student expression video. As the writer, I wrote a synopsis for the students describing the student activity as students unique and special first impressions of Birds of Paradise, one mural. We gave them the film time and date and place and told them that we'd be spoke, focusing on spirituality, revelation, and creation, and the spiritual message and visual components and aspects. Visual impact, impression, and expression is our focus today. We've invited students here at Roxbury Community College to express their unique and special first impressions of Nature Stone Art Birds of Paradise One masterpiece. I'm your host, Linda Myers. This is our second show on the Birds of Paradise One mural, focusing on spirituality, revelation, and creation as elements of the artwork. The new art form, art medium, and art technique was received through prayer by gifted artist creator Lewis Brown, who is here with us today, and also his sister Charlene Brown. There is a, a strong story or message about the pieces of the Nature Stone Art Collection and on the Birds of Paradise One mural, which we would like to explain to you. We want to help you to understand the visual components and aspects of the technique. Our creator, Lewis Brown, will be telling you more about the New Guinea Birds of Paradise, their creation, the painting and sculpting, and relief aspects of this art. Students will be expressing their first impressions and, and their opinions on the visual impact and any foreseen possible therapeutic value of the art. the bottom lines there with two jammed up. Yeah. It's, um, it's more than just looking at it. It's a, it's a stone, it's a, it's a concrete kind of stone foundation and that's where you are. No, that's not good. It's 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 then put like stones set in the, in the, over it. So, okay, the foundation, you use that mixture. But the colors are a watercolor. Okay. See, it is done on wood. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, because, I mean, paradise uh, in a tropical paradise. In the upper left corner is the ribbon tail bird of paradise.
the count reggae bird is the central figure in the mural. Perched on a rock beside him is the sickle crested bird of paradise. A brown sickle built bird with blue wings appears in the lower right corner. First on a branch high in the upper right corner is the King Saxony bird. Flying over the pond to its left is the Kingbird. My name is Lewis Brown. I live in Boston all, all my life. I learned that I have received a gift from God in my drawing abilities. When I was seven years old, my sister and I pray for a way to create art. We create the nature stone art concept and prototype. Charlene found herself carrying pieces of plywood into her home and later mixing a compound in her sink. I showed her how we could draw on the plywood. I told her that we needed to complete the idea was some small stones, which I found it outside. I showed her how we could place them on the surface of the compound. Then the nature stone artwork would dry in be painted and become a brilliant finished artwork. Visual impact, impression and expression is our focus today. We've invited students here at Roxbury Community College to express their unique and special first impressions of the Nature Stone Art Birds of Paradise One Masterpiece. I'm your host, Linda Myers. This is our second show on the Birds of Paradise One mural, focusing on spirituality, revelation, and creation as elements of the artwork. The new art form, art medium, and art technique was received through Priya by gifted artist creator Lewis Brown, who is here with us today, and also his sister Charlene Brown. There is a strong story or message about the pieces of the Nature Stone Art Collection and on the Birds of Paradise One mural, which we would like to explain to you. We want to help you to understand the visual components and aspects of the technique. Our creator, Lewis Brown, will be telling you more about the New Guinea Birds of Paradise, their creation, and about the painting and sculpting components and relief aspects. Students will be expressing their special first impressions and their opinions on the visual impact, the medium and technique, and commenting on any foreseen possible therapeutic value of the art. What I'm saying, I'll try and get some more students so you can get um, the real, real feedback on the, um, this picture here because I think it's a real inspiring picture. And there's a great message that I know students probably can give you some really good insight on what this message is um, being brought across, you know? Um, yeah, me and my sister, we were going to try to teach it here. 
seven years ago, but they didn't have the funds to pay the art teacher. Okay. Yeah, they have they have a few art courses here. I think if students were to come over here and see this picture or really um, take this picture for what it's worth, you know, they will really be interested in doing some of this because this, this could be a career for them too, you know? Yeah. You know, because it's interesting. Because, see, I can, I mean, I can do a whole lot more than just the picture. Okay. See, this is only the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, this, this art is just the beginning of something mm -hmm. that people are not used to yet. Like, I, I love art. I, 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 you know, I love art. Art is something that I've always tried in, in my, my growing up age. I, I never got far past drawing a stick man, though. You know, I love art. I just love to see. I just love to talk about it and stuff like that. It's something that I really got into. I'm always at the art museum, science museum. I just love to get into stuff like that. Okay, how about this? I mean, when y'all first look at this piece, do this piece look like uh, a museum piece instantly already? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Oh, def oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Abdi was from Africa. He was amazed by Lewis's imagination and the creativity of his mind. We showed him the book we put together with small prints of Lewis's masterworks of art and the statements that I had written. First, he saw the image of Mother Pearl. The next one was Eye of the Beholder. And the next one was In the Beginning, Just One Drop of Water. This was asking Abdi if his artwork was a museum piece within itself. Lewis and Charlene were on two paths that were separate and at a distance. Neither had knowledge that the other was traveling on this path to a miracle from God until at a certain point in time, these paths merged into one in the creation of nature's stone art. Charlene had been seeking a way to be creative. She thought she might work in some type of art involved with stone setting. Her thoughts were inspired by prayer. Lewis was deeply involved in a spiritual process of praying and seeking truth. He was actually seeking a way to create a whole new revolutionary art form. I know all about art in society, the racial, the ethnic, and the multicultural, the sculpture, the painting on campus, and other mediums. But I was seeking something more, something that was not in this world. I prayed to God and asked him to show me the true art and to help me to create a new different art form. God took my thoughts back to the Stone Age and to the pyramids and began to think about scripture. And God's words was upon this rock I built my church. Then God showed me how to build upon this rock with nature stone art the new art form that my sister and I created. It's a three-dimensional, it's a sculpture painting. When we did these first shoots, we wanted to focus strongly on experimental camera work to show the three-dimensional aspects and the sculpturing aspects of this invention, the three-dimensional new life art form medium and technique that bridges fine art and manufacturing. Those are panning shots that I'm doing um, Right now I'm focused on the ribbon-tailed bird and I'm panning over to the Count Reggie bird and up to the King of Saxony bird with the scalloped teal wires. 
down to the yellow sickle crested bird of paradise and the blue sickle billed bird of paradise. Those are the shots that that came from that camera work. Those are the scallop teal wires of the King of Saxony bird. And the yellow sickle crested bird of paradise. Build Bird of Paradise. And it's now over to the plumes of the Count Reggie Bird. focused on the lily pad and the kingbird flying over the water. Tom came in to do some shots and Lewis was viewing them in the monitor. Tom puts his camera right on the sculpturing compound. He's trying to capture the actual textual and sculpturing elements of the invention. He's over at the right side of the mural doing close-ups on the yellow sickle crested bird and blue sickle crested bird of paradise. Now he has his camera on the teal wire, the scallop teal wire of the King of Saxony bird. Wants to get the tripod out of his way. So Lewis comes in to help him out. And now he has the lens of the camera on the kingbird over in the left panel. The size of these panels are seven feet high by three feet wide. That makes the total width of the mural nine feet and the height seven feet. Now he has the lens of the camera on the tail of the ribbon-tailed bird of paradise. We just finished shooting the ribbon-tailed bird.
it looks almost, if you notice, like he's trying to detect geranium, the way he holds the camera on the mural. And these are the shots that came from that video session. There you can see very well the, the texture and the sculpturing and the painting of the blue sickle old bird. The skull of teal wire of the king of Saxony bird. You can see the stones and and the compound and and the texture quite well. That's a good close-up angle shot of the kingbird showing the sculpturing aspects and the texture. And that's the sculptured teals of the ribbon tailed bird. We did an exhibit at Dr. Solomon Carter for of Mental Health in Boston in November and October of 1997. We did a spin-off exhibit at Conley's in the Northeastern University area. It was filmed by Taliba Kennedy of BNN TV. From there, we brought the artwork out to Easton to set it up in a home gallery. We did an exhibit at the Bicentennial at Borderland Park in Easton in 1998. Joanne Sprague and Bonnie Frank visited our exhibit at Borderland Park. That's the mansion at Borderland. They had tried real hard to get an old-fashioned hot air balloon off the ground that day and finally did. These are some balloons that went up at the Irish Festival at Stonehill. Uh, Billy Bud Bulger tried to get us some publicity for the gallery, and we met Ray Flynn at the Irish Festival at Stonehill College also. Lewis made a sign for the grand opening of the gallery. That's our friend Joe Cook, the nut man and recording artist. On August 10, 1998, Lewis Brown received a great gift. Ed Cheever who is blind, painted the first nature stone art, new sculpture art concept ceramic fan. He chose to paint the fan in an elaborate display of color. His pattern reflects Lewis Brown and Charlene Brown's American Indian heritage. He chose to do it in a very difficult and challenging way. He chose to do the large out of the end in a number of colors, which uh, is the ultimate challenge. The New Life art form introduces a new visual element in 3D as a sculptured surface texture and a touching and feeling sensory element in this new third dimension. For this reason, this art can be worked with by the blind. We're here today at the Nature Stone Art Gallery. Sheesh! <laughs> Can I smack him? Mm -hmm. Ruin my artistic work. No, I just on that on the there's a white spot over here from the yeah a big white spot. Yeah. <laughs> 
Sheesh. Beat him up. You've blown my heart, Bokong. I told you, I want my white spots. That's there for a reason. It's white. Yeah. That one's white for a reason. Turn it out. Turn it over so we can see the bear. Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. There it is. Signed by both Ed and Louis. The number one being painted by the blind. August tenth, nineteen ninety-eight. Hi, I'm here again, Arlene and my brother Lewis. We're here to um, let you know that um, we are the creators of Nature's Stone Art. And we have here in our hand um, a reproduction of a fan that was created from Nature's Stone Art, which was painted by a blind person. And we just showing you that black people can also have fun in doing nature stone art, painting, and um, creating beautiful colors. And um, these are some of the colors that um, Ed. Tevis. This is this is some of his work that he did, and um, we did this from Nature Stone art, out of ceramic. It's, it's ceramic, but it was um, the original is Nature Stone art, and as you can see, blind people can do this type of art. And what we're trying to do is get more blind people involved in getting this. Nature Stone Art out to the public, letting them know that all types of people can have fun um, creating and painting from Nature Stone Art. And um, these are two that we're showing you that was done by a blind person. And it's multi-colors, as you can see. It's very beautiful. And we also thank Ed Sheevers for, for doing a test like this to see if this could be paint for the blind people. Okay. See? We received recognition for our films Blind Man Paints and Syrian and George Paint and Do Tactile Examinations of Lewis's Artwork, Parts 1 and Part 2, at the first Eastern Film Festival at Stonehill College in 2002, founded by Bill Ames and the Eastern Film Committee. Teachers and staff from Southeastern Regional Vocational School designed a tremendous layer cake with lights and edible film. Lewis and I enjoyed it a lot. We did some sightseeing in New York. We went to Morgan Stanley and the Stock Exchange down to NBC where we met Peter Max who designed the Bulls. We gave Al Roker a postcard. Jack Hamill was a good friend that helped us a lot with events and that's the Carriage House restaurant where we did some dancing and partying. We brought some three-dimensional art to Wayne, a blind man of the National Federation of the Blind in Worcester. The entertainment is great at Faneuil Hall and City Hall. We enjoy annual luncheons of the Mass Business Development and Department of Commerce at Anthony's Pier 4 in Boston. We brought Lewis's artwork there and exhibited it. Ted Kennedy received an award for all his years of service. Many people from Washington, D.C. were there. Sarah Ann and George posed for a photograph with the two fans that they each painted 
in front of Lewis's Birds of Paradise to Muir. Now, hold on, George, because you're going to be in it in a second unless she's already got you in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. So that the fan can... We're shaking like this. You're going to get in the dark floor. you got to turn that wide wheel. Yeah, lean into it a little bit. See, I don't want to put the shadow on the vision. Yeah. She can't hold it then. I no. can't hold it. It's wet. Yeah, okay. Okay. Right okay. okay. All right. You get paint all over everybody. Okay. Yeah, it's still wet. I it's a little bit more to your left, George. No, no, right. no, I'll wait. Yeah, it's Okay, well, let me get her face then. Wait a second. I should. I'm going to the face, so. Right. Okay. okay. How do you feel? No, wait. Are you taking it now? Yeah. Maybe, maybe you can put the uh, uh, pink for us in that, in that hand. Mm -hmm. I'll want it. <laughs> yeah, but what it is. Yeah. Uh, not in a long time, George. The last time I babysat, I had three stripes on my arm. What, what does that mean? I was a sergeant in the Marine Corps. <laughs> had a babysat 28 guys. That's trouble. You know I mean, like little kids or whatever. This is the color. Yeah. See, because when you put your eyes into the middle, like this, um, it's a yeah. black and the first one. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's like so a you might want to take um, feeling. Feeling. and say yeah. that this area might be. And you pull this one. Yeah, right. See that? This might be like a reverse. Oh, reverse, yes. And then you might want to put it like this. Yeah. Because uh, no matter which way you paint it, when you mix the colors up, it comes out great. Yeah. <laughs> you can put because there's a million colors. Lewis did an exhibit of his mural and other artworks at the John Driscoll Gallery on the second floor of the Brockton Public Library in November of 2000. I wrote and copyrighted the artist statements. The red coat is about resting or relaxing. The low sun is very hot. The journey has been long. The red coat is at rest. The hitch has been dropped, and all we can see now is the horse tail reflection as the horse has already drunk from the cool water at the duck pond. The reflection from behind the pebble shows the chariot underneath. That's city action. That's a spin-off that Charlene Brown did from Lewis's artwork, Unity.
nature stone at abstract. It's a wall graphic made from wood and stones in a compound which artists Charlene Brown and Lewis Brown designed and developed to promote and advertise the new art medium and technique which the sister and brother invented. Lewis did the sketch on plywood. They developed the forms and figures with the sculpturing compound together. Charlene did the stone setting. Her conscious mind imagined that her hand alone would create this abstract piece as she engaged herself thoughtlessly in molding and shaping this sculptured piece. She deliberately suppressed conscious thought relative to pictures or shapes while she created her wall graphic. The finished results are truly a revelation. Her unconscious mind and Lewis's created incredible hidden treasures to satisfy the sense of adventure and curiosity present in their audiences. Gold is the theme color for this work. Lewis filled in the other colors. Paradise is a natural paradise with the sun shining down overall. We view a beautiful mountain and a thriving grove of trees. The sea is behind the mountain. There are a few dark clouds overhead and in the way of the sun. Two prehistoric ducks are in the forefront in water that we cannot see. All seems to be at peace in this paradise. Eye of the Beholder, the Ram. Unity was previously titled Shadow Forms. Predominant in the artist's mind was a theme of connections and connecting. The shadow forms are busy forms which are connected. Each body form has a uniform body motion or posture. Each was created separately. They are action figures which appear to be involved in dance, sport, and various activities. Heart of the Drum is about the heartbeat of the artist, drummer Lewis Brown. Lewis says that the yellow printed on the edges of the drum represents energy. coming with you, you know, when you came over. <laughs> Barnard. Barnard. It's cold. I think everybody's hunking in for the night. Boy, I announced it on the radio this morning. Oh, did it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. see what happens. Yeah. I know that we really take the ground out of people's lives when they really fit. Maybe. But it's never
Yeah, we're still letting people know that it's it's here, you know, for yeah. another few weeks. You know. The Enterprise Fund? Well, see, it sent them all the information, um, and I haven't talked to them recently, because uh, Andrea Bates, that sang at the Jazz Festival, she was going to yeah. write something up, and I, um, I've been too busy to call her, so I don't even know what, you know, if anything's been in, you know. I can't follow all the news, newspapers. I send out a lot of press releases to all of them, and I can't go through them off a lot. Call, you know, contact the people I sent them to to find out if they did anything. Okay. I notified all the, um, the superintendent of schools and the colleges, and um, I was hoping some people would be coming in from there. Yeah. Next time you get one, you don't need it. Because it looks different when it's on the paper. The first time you show it to you on the postcard, it looks different from the way it's being now. I think I can catch a picture of a couple of years in front of the mirror. Lucia down. See, she just told me that another artist came in and, you know, to look at the exhibit and she just arranged it. She, you know, arranged one with him, yeah. So she's, um... It's not easy to get exhibits from some places. Mm -hmm. I was lined up at Stonehill College twice. Yeah, and so Lucia. Was she behind the counter down there? So Like, 
like, like this one is like swamp farm grass. Mm -hmm. This is real light. But I'm, I'm saying mostly any don't cover the cat and different materials. I mean, they don't have to be heavy like the original. Some can have a, like a, a, a reproduced thing, but they can paint. It's just a paint place more time on the floor with a reproduction. Yeah, we did a, a, a test program. We did want to do a book, you know, we planned at a time to do a book with that photographer and all that, but we tried to get money from the NEA and different grants, and you have to have your 501 c 3 and that costs a little bit of money, so we haven't done that. Yeah, I tried to get a children to publish, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. The competition is awful out there, you know? Yeah. And the business cards, too. Mm -hmm. It would be great for um, teaching, educating the kids about manufacturing because that's something that's hidden away. You know, you, they really don't learn about what goes on in manufacturing. Yeah, manufacturing. Uh, Like, 
play or for men or females. That's the reason I wanted to be in a home. They could have the right of <laughs> We had somebody actually that would have liked um, a three-dimensional reproduction of that, but they wanted to pay $30,000 for it, and we didn't have the contact with the manufacturer that we have now at that time that could have done it, you know, we could have done it for that price then, you know. So we lost, you know, and he lost a seal with uh, somebody that was in Jordan's years ago that wanted to pay him 80000 you know, to, to do a piece like that for an original. He wanted to, him to go to Arizona and do one. Yeah, I didn't have a trauma, but at that time I wasn't ready at that time because I didn't have a cat, I didn't have a copyright, I didn't have none of that stuff yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. They want to try to do some work, and, you know, for somebody just to make them make sure, you know, they are there making whatever money. <laughs> People are going to say, who did it, you know? <laughs> So me and my sister wasn't, this was, this started in 1980. This was, this was written, started in 1980, this year 2000. But it took all this time to, to make all, all these clips. Plus I had one, uh, I got another one in Boston, but it's at Rockstreet College that I've never donated in 1990. It's just time to print the green stuff up to get it out. <laughs> <laughs> This one is the fourth section. But it's, it's the same, everything is the same. On the other picture, it's more of a landscape. It has six birds on it. Yeah, I'm sorry, you have to get to me. 
good luck. All good followers. Good job. Okay. Lewis and Mayer Unit's picture was in the picture gallery of Art Business News in February 2001. My work with uh, Lewis Brown as his publicist means that I need to get photos published and articles published. Associated Press published um, a press release directly in June of 1997 about future generations, a project in the Boston area that Lewis was working, working on. Articles like this from um, the Taunton Daily Gazette and this from the Eastern Journal um, were written by staff writers who came here with photographers to do the story after I sent them press releases. Andrea Bates is a columnist with the um, Enterprise, the Brockton Enterprise, and she does her own research during the time of the events and publishes the information in her column. The Globe published this photo that I submitted when we did an exhibit at the Women's Educational and Industrial Union on Boylston Street in, in Boston with the Working Capital Group. We did exhibits at Summer Sunday in the Park at the Fuller Museum of Art in August of 1999 and 2000. <laughs> Should be in a Clint Eastwood movie. Hey, Gringo. Hey. <laughs> you see me? You see me? I drove the bus down. They had some buses down the Broadway Fair. Yeah. The Marshfield Fair. Friday. My friend Joseph. You get on there like easy movie. Like yeah. 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 Yeah.
3D stone look designer building blocks with kids and their parents at Fuller Museum of Art at an event called Summer Sunday in the Park in August of 1999 and 2000. <laughs> This one is small, but you can just walk into the house. You let into the house for you want to go into the house. I guess you can do it now.
Lewis and I each painted an 8x10 oil on canvas section of this piece by piece mural project designed by Helen O'Keefe, the chairperson of the Artist Circle. It was framed and postcards were made for fundraising purposes. We did an exhibit at Brockton City Hall with the Artist Circle of the Fuller Museum of Art in Brockton. Lewis exhibited the city action and all that jazz. for their leadership and achievements by the literary community. I've also been nominated in 2004 by the American Biographical 
Vicenta as one of the great women of the 21st century. This award is given to historical leaders, explorers, political activists, celebrities, authors, artists, and royalty. That's, you're, seeing, you're feeling a reflection. was the Glorietta chain. Every year he went to Italy to the family land where they raised prize-winning tomatoes, wine, and other products. This is the Dragani family. The wine with the family crest. The dragon in the night. Mother and her brother were at Beatrice and Dante the Inferno. When she married Tony, he was cousin to the treasurer at the Vatican. St Stacy was commended by the Nina News for the article that she wrote on the future of journalism was on almost a full scholarship to Emerson and working for the News Tribune, covering meetings and the police blotter. 
This is Our Lady of the Americas. I received this poster at Immaculate Conception at the time of a visionary talk, which reminded me of Danielle. The visionary's name was Ruiz from Arizona. I was registered as an attorney pro se with the Social Law Library at the time of my Supreme Court case. I did a rebuttal on a Channel 5 editorial on DSS Morass after Marjorie Aaron's Barons reviewed my legal research materials on biological rights of parents. It had three times. The first time I was on national te television was when I rebutted a Channel 5 editorial which supported the Foreman and DeMacy bills at the Massachusetts. Massachusetts State House, which were in favor of speeding up the adoption laws. I argued in favor of parental rights under the Constitution and the 14th Amendment guaranteeing parents the complete care, custody, and management of their children as one of the basic civil rights of men, as argued in cases like Santosky versus Kramer and Chaplet versus Freeman. DSS was in favor of parental rights also in helping the parents because they find that children, even in difficult circumstances at home, wish to remain with their parents and that being separated from their parents can lead to um, long-term and even, even lifelong problems for those children. I went on to I went on to support these constitutional rights um, in a case that I argued myself with the Supreme Court of the state and the Supreme Court of the country. When I was having these problems with my children in the courts, my mother referred me to Father Joseph McDermott, who she knew from the Guild of the Rosary in Norwood at St. Timothy's, who is executive director of Cardinal Law's Prisoner Spiritual Ministries. He became my spiritual pastoral counselor. He met with my children and went to court and became a witness. He wanted to help to bring us together. The prisoners make rosary beads. The pilgrim statue came to my home for a week. Barbara witnessed her smile when I put her with her son. Clinton loves pizza. George Bush Sr. promotes programs to save biological families. And Little Bush loves the 4th of July. Stacy graduated from Franklin High School. My cousin and I did things with our kids and worked in restaurants and in her business together. My former in-laws, the Myers and Scanlons, came to graduation with Uncle Jimmy, who's a police officer. I produced the Linda and Lewis Diversity Show. It's radio and talk with Lewis as my co-host. You are tuned in to Cyber Station USA to the Linda and Lewis Diversity Show. We are artists, filmmakers, writers, painters, musicians, and music lovers public persons and private citizens, professional, political, and non-political alike, moving in the spirit, promoting good causes, and people in love, bringing you music and talk and guests for Kaleidoscope Radio Magazine. We are sponsored by Dr. Freddie Gabriel Bishop of the Urban Ministries of Boston and the American Leadership Conference spiritual leaders of the world.